I like to pretend I'm not a superstitious person, but when I'm traveling, there are two songs I always listen to. The Glory of Love by Big Bill Brunsey and The Fox by Nickel Creek. And you might be thinking, Char, are you a total hipster? Are those new indie bands that I've never heard of? And you would be wrong. My taste in music is obscure only in that I like music that old people like. Those are old folk songs sung by blues and bluegrass bands. I remember in elementary school, we were allowed to listen to the local Top 40 radio station during art class, and a lot of the girls would listen to a song and say, that song is so old. And I just remember hearing them say that and think to myself, I'm into Mozart. That's 18th century. I wonder if Beethoven ever went to a Mozart concert and was like, these songs are so old. He probably did, to be honest. We're at the part with all the windmills. Now we're at the part of the trip where we're passing through downtown Indianapolis. I've passed through here so many times on the Megabus, but I've only been to Indianapolis once for Gen Con, a giant nerdy gaming convention in 2013. I'd love to go here more often. This is where my friend Sarah lives when she's not at college, and it's where some of my favorite YouTube videos are made. John Green's videos, the art assignment, half of Crash Course. But Indianapolis still isn't like Chicago or Cincinnati for me. I don't know its layout or its streets. It's still one of those places I admire from afar, like that friend you see in the hallway that you want to know better. The highway between Indianapolis and Cincinnati is really straight and pretty empty, but it still stresses me out to be on here because there's just so much corn. I studied abroad in London, and when I was there, I went to a stir-fry place once where their special monthly ingredient was sweet corn. And I remember thinking, oh honey, that's cute, but I'm a gay boy from Ohio. I am your special monthly ingredient. In the summertime, I am 72% corn, 18% peach juice, and 10% unrequited crushes. Now, St. Paul, Indiana doesn't have very much on Chicago, but they do have a giant truck stop called Love's, which the Megabus usually stops at, except today when they blew right past it. I'm kind of sad, actually. I don't get to show you the giant stuffed monkeys, and I don't get to take a glamour shot of me on the bus eating Fritos, and I don't get to explain to you how I'm addicted to Fritos. Well, okay, I'll do it anyway. I am addicted to Fritos. Well not addicted. I don't go through withdrawal when I don't have them, but when I do have them, I tend to eat too many. For a while, I wondered why I liked them so much, whether there was some special chemical in them that kept me coming back for more. And then I looked at the ingredients, and they were just corn, corn oil, and salt. They just ground up corn, fried it in another part of the corn, then sprinkled on some stuff they scraped off a rock. It pleases me to know that my tastes in food are actually quite primitive. I like to think of the person thousands of years ago who first dipped a piece of food into hot fat. And I think of the connection between that person, the person who first saw an ear of corn in the ground and said, let's plant a whole field of this, Frito-Lay and me, on a bus in Indiana dreaming about junk food. We're about at the border between Indiana and Ohio, and I can tell that because Southern Ohio is kind of the border between the Midwest and coal country, so there are actually some sizable hills. It certainly feels like home here, unlike in Chicago where I have to explain to people what a hill is. I'm only sort of kidding. One of the things that the Obama library is going to build on its campus is a hill, so that Southside kids will get to experience sledding. And now I'm home. Time to raid the pantry and eat too many Fritos.